Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. We're going to look at the top scores for Switch Up in January. Wow. Yes, it would be, yeah, January. My goodness, that's gone quick. So we did 17 games last month, which was pretty crazy. 17 reviews. These are the top 10 scores of those 17. That is a lot of, yeah, a lot of reviews. Yeah. Right, let's jump into the list. In number 10 then, we have the Atelier Dusk Trilogy. Now in these games, if you're unaware, or in this trilogy, there are five different alchemists that you take control of. Some of them are just starting out in alchemy, and you have to go out into the environments, harvest up all your ingredients, bring them back, and a lot of your missions and side quests are based around the things that you can then produce. Okay. They're good games. In fact, I really enjoyed these. But the price was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Like it was £72.99 for the trilogy, which, look, it's a... I think some of these games are almost 10 years old, that's crazy. Mm. But, you know, if that's your bag, you can pick it up physically as well. We gave this a switch up score of 76%. Next up we have Book Bound Brigade, which is a Metroidvania, albeit one with a very heavy emphasis on puzzle platforming. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a very interesting game, and I did enjoy it. It's got very quirky humour, uh, a lot of characters from fiction, people like Dracula, Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz, oh, nice. as well as some historical characters in there, Julius Caesar, Queen Victoria. What I didn't enjoy so much was that when you backtrack in a normal Metroidvania, mm -hmm. you go back to a generally quite empty area that you've already been to and you can find where it is you now need to go. Yeah. In this one, you go back to the same platforms and have to traverse them all again, which is a bit of a pest. Having said that, I did enjoy it and it got a switch up score of 77%. Okay, next game then was a game called Never Again. This is a, a first person walking simulator. Got a lot of them now, haven't we? Yeah, we have, yeah, mm. there are a lot of these now. Horror themed game. Although what I will say, I can't say too much because if you say too much, it will completely spoil, spoil it. it, but it has a very good story. A, a story that you don't necessarily see coming until about halfway through, I kind of mm -hmm. commented on as to what was happening. But it's very interesting. It's almost worth playing just for that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, in terms of gameplay mechanics, it's physics based, it has a good physics engine. Doesn't do a huge amount that hasn't been done before, but that story kept me hooked. And it's got a switch up score of 78%. Decent. Next up we've got Warhammer 40,000 Space Wolf. I might have made a slightly um, interesting comment in the first five seconds <laughs> of this one, but it's a very good game. I was really surprised. Now if you played this back on mobile, you will know that it was full of pay, 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 pay gates. They've taken all of that out for the console versions and it's decent. It's got good mechanics, it's got lovely visuals and there's a ton of gameplay and it's a decent price. I don't know what that noise was. Came from my crotch. <laughs> his, his crotch has just got done a notification. <laughs> I gave this one 81%. It's a very good game. Shame it hasn't got a physical. Next up then is 1980X. I don't know what you'd call visual, it's it. It's almost like a visual novel, isn't it's it? It's kind of it. I mean, like it's different it's genres. five small games put into one, but to call them games is a bit of a stretch. They're, they're kind of five small levels or experiences. Like snapshots. Like snapshots. And it's about, it is about that experience. Mm -hmm. It is about that story of escapism and growing up in the 80s and how video games were a way of yeah. getting away from everyday life, basically. The five games included, uh, two of them, are long enough that you could play them again, I would mm -hmm. say. One of them is brilliant, but way too short. Two of them actually are too short. And the last one is a bit of a dud. So it's a bit of a mixed bag. Right. But as, an, as a package, I really enjoyed it and it got 82%. Lovely. Next up 
up then we have Jamestown Plus, which is a retro style in terms of the art style mm -hmm. uh, shoot 'em up. I really enjoyed this game, yeah. although I do have one issue with it, which I'll get to in a minute. Okay. So it's based on Jamestown um, and it has uh, Sir Walter Raleigh in it. He escapes his real life execution and ends up on oh, Mars, nice. which is where Jamestown is now based. Cool. Okay. The gameplay is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, it has a system where you have to collect gold and then use that to power up your score multiplier and yep. you can keep collecting the gold to keep it topped up the whole time. Oh nice, yeah. And it has um, up to four player local online leaderboards, everything you'd want. Mm -hmm. What I didn't enjoy so much was that it's seen as a very accessible game. It yeah. makes a point of saying how it's for everyone, you know, mm. newcomers to the genre. But you have to complete certain levels on hard to move on. Now for me, I, that's fine, I can do that. But, Pro. <laughs> of course. But why make such a big deal of it being accessible and if you're yeah. then gonna block it off? It just didn't make sense to me. Mm. But irrespective of that, it got 83%. Next up we've got Super Crush KO, which I reviewed. This one reminded me a little bit of the game Bleed 2 that I reviewed oh, yeah. way back. Yeah, yeah. The storyline goes that an alien rocks up. She likes the look of your cat, as you do, and steals it. So then your whole game is just chasing her down and uh, writing that wrong. It's got a really interesting score multiplier balancing system whereby your rank is constantly shown on screen, so you've got to be constantly killing enemies, okay. which keeps it topped at the S rank. That was like bleed, wasn't it? A was lot like yeah, bleed. Yeah. So each section of a level is almost its own confined area, a bit like Guacamelee. Um, so yeah, if you like those two games, then you'll probably like this one. I think I gave it 84%. Right, in at number three for the month then was Hypercharge Unboxed, which is a first person wave based shooter with yeah. PvP. It's a horde, it's got a horde mode. Horde mode in there, yeah, with PvP uh, elements mm -hmm. and modes as well. This was really good, wasn't it? Yeah. Very much enjoyed this Very one. Very good game. We played a good lot of this four player online and had a great time with yeah, it. Brilliant game. We have a couple of videos for this if you want to check them out. All yeah. of the review links will be in the top in comment, by the way. So we have our review and we also have a beginner's guide as well just to get you started if you're struggling with it, if you've picked it up. Yeah. Want to add one thing in? Yeah. It features, if you ever played the game Time Splitters, it features a mode that's very similar to Time Splitters 2's mode where you'd have one player kind of as the infected and then you have to go after the other yeah. players. Plague mode. Plague mode. Yeah. And yeah. that's really good, but it's it doesn't fun. get much coverage. Yeah, no, it's good fun. Uh, this got a switch up score of 84%. Coming in at number two for the month then was the Psycho Shooting Stars Alpha Collection. Mm -hmm. So this has six uh, classic shoot em ups from the Psycho company on there. Some absolute brilliant games like um, Zero Gunner 2. Some are maybe not as uh, well liked these days such as Soul Divide, although I like that one, I enjoyed it. For your money, you're getting some great games here. One thing I will say that disappointed me a touch is there's no collection of the history of Psycho on here. So there's no concept art or anything like that. It would have yeah. been nice. Okay. Or a history of the games when they first come out. Having said all that, it's still fantastic and it got 85%. Lovely. Last but certainly not least is our number one review for January and that was Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. I didn't expect much from this if I'm honest. I like Gwen in The Witcher 3 but I was rubbish at it. <laughs> but I thought, you know, I saw The Witcher name and I just went for it like I'm sure many other people did. It's a brilliant story. You take on the role of Meeve who is the Queen of Rivia and Lyria and yeah, it does have the card based combat 
that's similar to Gwent, but many of, it, uh, many of the battles actually are puzzles. So there's a very specific order in which you have to play your cards to actually win them, which I liked because it took out the randomness that I don't often like with games like Hearthstone. Okay, you know? yeah, yeah. Really enjoyed it. Beautiful visuals, amazing storytelling, like really good. So yeah, brilliant game and well worth a purchase. We gave it 91%. Lovely, so that's our 10 top games for the month. Uh, did you pick any of them up? Did you enjoy them? Did you buy anything else? Let us know, please do. Like I say, all of the links to the reviews will be in that top in comment. Yeah, so all left to say then is a quick thank you to our patrons as always yeah. for your continued support, and of course, each and every one of you for watching our videos. For all things Switch all the time. Keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya. Yes, that <laughs> one was ear splitting. <laughs>